If you don't believe that there is some sort of institutional racism going on in America, dude, try to find, count the amount of hoarders, hoarder episodes that are of African Americans. I dude, there are so little and few. <laughs> That's why I love hoarders, dude. It's white trash living in trash. It's beautiful. Hoarders is beautiful. When I watch an episode of Hoarders, I want that episode to contain low IQ points, missing teeth, and questionable family. Trees, you know those family trees that whenever that assignment comes up in third grade, there's always that one student who is exempt from doing the, the presentation of their family tree because you know they're in third grade and explaining incest to a third grader is just a little bit too intense. What the fuck is up? This is the Constant State of Annoyance Podcast, and I am your host, George Blaha. Thank you for clicking. Thank you for misclicking. I'm just glad you're here, dude. I really hope you guys are keeping sane. I hope you're finding productive ways to, you know, pass the time doing quarantine because I've just, I've ran out of things, man. I've ran out of motivation. I've just, I don't know, man. I started watching, I've been wasting a lot of time, and it's been it's been horrible for me. I started watching TV shows that I have no business in watching. Like the other day, I decided to fire up an episode of Jeopardy! Because, you know, as someone who was born in 1996 and in the internet age, I didn't, like, I... I knew kind of what would what what Jeopardy was. I understood the the dynamic more or or less, but I've never like actually witnessed an episode. So I fired up an episode, and boy, like what I just I was watching Jeopardy with one ginormous question mark just floating on top of my fucking head, like. How do you even, just the fact that people train for Jeopardy. And not only that, Jeopardy, the way you train for Jeopardy is just you start learning facts. You start consuming information. You just load up on just information. What information? Apparently fucking everything. Pop culture references, you know, hit, hit, hit. History, everything, music, classical music, all types of music. It's like, how the fuck does someone load up on this shit, dude? Jeopardy is just ass people with Asperger's just battling it out. That's all Jeopardy fucking is, dude. That's all it is, man. Just fucking people with Asperger's just fighting it out with facts, dude. With pop quizzes. In my high school, we used to do something similar as Jeopardy, but instead of giving, you know, kids with Asperger's pop quizzes, all we would do is try to, like, pin themselves against each other and try to get them to fight behind a school with gloves on, and we and we tried to record it. That's what we tried to do <laughs> back in my day. That was our version of Jeopardy. And you know what? Our version of Jeopardy was much more entertaining. <laughs> We wouldn't do that. <laughs> but the thought of it is pretty funny to me. <laughs> you know? We we would go to like one of the tards, you know? And we would go like, hey, Tommy Tartard told me that your Bay Blade game is whack, yo. What are you gonna do about it? You start hyping them up, dude. <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? Huh? Tommy Tartard said that he would put he that, that he would stick his whole Beyblade co collection inside your mom's pussy. What are you gonna do about it? He's like, oh, I'm, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll meet him behind the school. Yeah, you should meet him behind the school. Hey, where are these gloves? <laughs> you know. But I don't know. Tards don't fight that well. All they do is like you know. Sissy slap each other with gloves on, but it's still a fun watch. It's still, <laughs> you know, it's not the main event, though. <laughs> hey, did you hear what Tommy Tartard said about you? He said that 
He said that he smells his fingers and eats crayons better than you, yo. <laughs> oh, God. But it's fucking crazy. I don't understand Jeopardy. I don't know why you would watch Jeopardy. I have no reason, dude, to ever watch, like, eat, and not even participate. Why the fuck would you watch Jeopardy? The episode that I watch, there's this one dude. There was this one Asperger's neckbeard dude. This Asperger-y neckbeard bro, dude. That, that, and obviously, you know, he went on the Jeopardy stage with a fedora. But the production team told him to take it off. He was that type of person. He was a smart dude. He knew all these facts. It was fucking insane. And this fucking guy, he was just nailing. He was nailing the George Clooney section of fucking Je and, and on this episode of Jeopardy. It's like, how do you know all these George Clooney facts, dude? Like how? Like if, unless if you're like some like forty year old that just fantasize a, a fucking George Clooney because she's in a slightly abusive marriage or her husband is just neglecting her constantly. You know the flame of that marriage is over, gone, nada. You know, and the only reason that you two are together is for the kids. And even the kids are, are are barely a factor, you know, because because they're 16. One of them's like 21, smoking too much weed. You know, they're in that phase of their lives that they're just like embarrassed and tired of you. <laughs> you know, you drink a bottle of wine every night. You've de you you you've developed a cheese and wine problem. You know, you're eating too much cheese. It's a it's affecting your skin. You know, but thank God that the cheese is affecting your skin because if not, oh boy, oh boy, if your skin was nice and smooth and the, and the lactose of the cheese wasn't affecting your skin, you would definitely cheat on your husband. You know, those are the type of people, those women are the ones who know all these facts about George Clooney, but this guy was killing it, dude. It's like, that's just crazy. This, these people just load up. They consume information. Any and all types of information, dude. They load themselves up of in, of information and then just throw it out of their systems on stage. It's fucking wild. For money. For money. Jeopardy is basically like instead of watching a hot dog eating contest, it's watching the 20 minutes after the hot dog eating contest and, and the crowd has cleared and, and all of the hot dog eating contesters are throwing up the hot dogs. Throwing up 10 pounds of hot dogs. You know what I mean? Just throwing it out. That That's what Jeopardy is, dude. It's so sick. Like, you're just, you're just loading up on any and all kinds of information. That's fucking wild, dude. Like, I, like, is Jeopardy still going? Are people still competing on Jeopardy? Like, I could not conceive anyone from my generation ever doing that, you know? Because back in the day, you know, people who were, like, participating in Jeopardy, I think Jeopardy was, like... When did Jeopardy start, by the way? Now I'm fucking curious. But I'm pretty sure that Jeopardy was going on, like, before the internet. And that would make sense because all you had to do was, was like, read the encyclopedia read the fucking encyclopedia but now with the internet it's like it's crazy dude it's fucking wild i don't get that there, there is like a type of person that i could see that has those like jeopardy genes in my generation but they have a niche dude and that is the person that is constantly spewing vine references dude they are this living breathing ad campaign for a dead platform that we have all forgotten vine has been replaced by tiktok why are you referencing vine anymore quit it grow up and these fucking people and the worst part is the worst that's a bug that's a virus yo people who who are still spewing vine references in their 20s like if someone committed a hate crime against those people, I think there would be like there'd be like ten percent of people who would like vocally applaud that. <laughs> they would be like, yeah, fuck those people, dude. Fuck those people. And fuck women who are hot and all they do is just spew vine and office references. Fuck you. Fuck you. 
Because now I want to fucking add. I want to fuck and I want to stick my dick in an ad. In a walking, breathing ad for a dead platform, dude. Like, it, it, those people piss me off. And, 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 and if it's not Vines, all they're doing is like referencing punchlines for memes. That's a big problem for my generation. That's a big, disgusting problem. Those are the nerds of my generation, dude. Because now, you know, it's like, it's an open field of information. Like, it used to be people just referencing, I guess, Star Wars or maybe, like, wrestling. Like, there, there weren't many things to, like, consume. There weren't, like, many options of media to, like, take in and munch on, you know? But now it's like there, there's everything and in, in anything, and people are just... People start referencing memes and shit. People start referencing anime, all in any types of anime, even if you don't know the anime. Even if it's some, like, obscure, you know, IP, some obscure anime that no one knows. They'll, they'll, they'll start referencing about it, and they'll get angry if you don't get It's so weird. People are so fucking odd, dude. It's like, what? Like, I get it. I'm empty, too. Don't you think I'm empty? I am fucking hollow inside. Do you know how much energy, how much time and energy I have put into con concocting this persona? You know, tightening my defense mechanisms to fucking hide the hollow emptiness inside me? Yeah, I'm empty. But I don't go fucking, I, I create shit. I try. All you do is just fucking load up on fucking megabytes, gigabytes of the internet. Gigabytes of the internet. And all you do is just spew them out while no one's looking at their phone, dude. While no one's looking at their goddamn phone. Sometimes I just want to hang out with my friends. Sometimes I want to put my phone down. Quit scrolling. My thumbs hurt. I've been scrolling all day. And I caught myself scrolling all day. And now I hate myself. And now I feel bad. I want to put my phone down. Phone. Airplane mode. Pocket. And then I meet up with some dork friend. With some loser friend. That before this event. You know. I did not know that I, that I was going to distance myself from this fucking loser. And I, and, and, and I meet up with this guy. And I realize, oh my god, this guy's just, uh, he's just fucking spewing out meme punchlines. And I'm like, I can't, I can't escape the scroll, dude. There's some people out there that, 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 those type of people, though, those are the only friends they have. People who are just referencing the internet over and over again. No matter where you put your phone. No matter if you're in a field with no fucking internet signal. And you're with this person, the scroll is following you, dude. The internet has fucking taken over, brainwashed. Human beings, dude, they, they ceased to be a person. All they are is a constant reminder that you are not on the internet. That you should be scrolling. Okay, those people are prisoners and they're trying to imprison you. These fucks! These fucks! Stop referencing the internet! Be a person! Be normal! Fucking 20 year olds! And, the, and, and every other sentence that falls out of their fucking face is a TikTok reference! Like, grow the fuck up! Have an opinion! Be critical! Sit in a silent room! See what comes up! These fucks. I'm tired. I'm fucking exhausted of people, dude. Don't, don't matter where you go, dude. Dude, if you don't, if if you're not willing to like cut ties with a bunch of people, the scroll is going to follow you. The scroll will follow you and will catch up, dude. No matter where you go, dude. The scroll. Dude, it's crazy, dude. The internet is now flesh. It it, it has now. Turned into flesh and it walks around, dude. It's fucking wild, man. Like, that's all they are, dude. That's all they... And it freaks me the fuck out. Jesus Christ. That's what that, that's what Jeopardy is, basically. Because all these people are like, Oh my God, these people are in, on Jeopardy are so smart. But like, what, like what, is, what is smart? What is being intelligent? What, loading up on facts? You know? Having a large, you know, hard drive and not 
you know, using processing power to create new things? Is that what being smart fucking is? Oh, look at me. I know fucking street names of an obscure village in Italy. Like, who gives a... Why? Why? Why load up on this information, dude? Instead of creating... I don't get... I don't... I don't get it, man. And I can't... I can't dude, I, I, I eliminated every single person like that in my life, dude. And I've never been happier. But fucking Jeopardy, man. Fucking Jeopardy. I quit... I, you know, I, I, I could have finished... Uh, episode of Jeopardy. It just, it made, it made me angry, dude. It really made me angry. Like this is, this is what it is. People loading up on facts and then, you know, vomiting it out on, on well, uh, Justin, oh, Justin Trudeau. Wait, wait, is Justin Trudeau like a politician or is that like the guy from Jeopardy? I don't know. I just watched one episode. Don't get mad at me because I got that one wrong. And after that, I decided I went, I, did, I, I wouldn't say I went lower. I went a little higher. But it's still on the low. I decided to watch TV that that whose targeted audience is 42-year-olds, who couch potato 42-year-olds who have given up on life, you know, and all they do is flip through channels and settle on the less crappy thing at 3 p.m. And I started watching Hoarders, and... <laughs> I started watching Hoarders, and let me tell you, I got to hand it to those fucking 42-year-old loser nihilists, dude. Hoarders is an interesting TV show, man. Hoarders captivates me, man. But I, I, I have one complaint with Hoarders. I have one single complaint with Hoarders. I cannot stand when, when an episode of Hoarders is about, is a tearjerker, is a sad story. I refuse to fucking watch, and, and, and I don't really refuse. I'll finish watching the episode, but I hate it when Hoarders wants to become some sad tearjerker show. Like, no, you're lame, bro. Why are you doing this to me? This isn't why I watch Hoarders. To feel bad? If I wanted to feel bad, I would just binge watch on St. Jude commercials. I would binge watch on St. Jude commercials if I wanted to feel bad. I would fucking drop a heavy dosed edible and watch vegan propaganda. I would drop a heavy dosed edible and watch a documentary on the meatpacking industry and just watch, you know, 45 minutes of footage. Of cows being brutally slaughtered. That's what I would do if I wanted to feel bad. If I wanted to feel bad, all I have to do is look myself in the mirror, directly in the mirror. Just take my bangs, my bangs, you know, where the fuck. Take the hair that is on top of my forehead, sling it back, and just stare at my hairline. That would get a tear or two running in a couple of minutes. I don't watch Hoarders to be sad. I hate these episode of Hoarders. I hate these fucking episode of Hoarders where where it's about some like, you know, some veteran, you know, that was like traumatized by the war, but the only thing keeping him together, pieced together and not going crazy was his family taking care of his daughter and his wife. But then one day, one sad fateful day, his wife and child die in a car accident, you know? And this fucking vet loses his shit. And all he could do to fill the void of this big empty house that he purchased with his service money, with his GI Bill. All he could do to fucking fill the void and kill the pain a little, just to numb himself a little, is fucking... Go crazy at a 99 cent store. That's all this veteran can fucking do. And the reason why he's just hoarding, just, you know, bringing in piles and piles of stuff in his house because he doesn't want his house to resemble, to resemble the home where his mother, where his, sorry, daughter and deceased wife used to live 
happily ever after. He doesn't want his house to resemble that place anymore. So he fucking covers all of his house with piles of stuff so it could resemble another fucking place. It, it's not the place where he used to live with his daughter and wife anymore. It's just a fucking storage unit filled with stuff stacked to the roof. You know, I don't want to cry in an episode of Hoarders, bro. Fuck you. The reason why I watch Hoarders is to watch the crazy beasts that inhabit the suburbs. The crazy, untamed, upper middle class animals. Because that's what I want to see. Because, by the way, being a hoarder, that is like a... Upper middle class to rich disease, dude. You cannot become a poor hoarder. <laughs> That's why you, you're you barely ever going to see a black hoarder. <laughs> it's fucking crazy, dude. If you don't believe that there is some sort of institutional racism going on in America, dude, try to find, count the amount of... Hoarders, hoarder episodes that are of African Americans. I dude, they are so little and few. <laughs> That's why I love hoarders, dude. It's white trash living in trash. It's beautiful. Hoarders is beautiful. When I watch an episode of Hoarders, I want that episode to contain low IQ points, missing teeth. And questionable family trees. You know those family trees that whenever that assignment comes up in third grade, there's always that one student who is exempt from doing the, the presentation of their family tree. Because you know they're in third grade and explaining incest to a third grader is just a little bit too intense. Those are the episodes of Hoarders that I want to watch, dude. I want to watch an episode of Hoarders where someone just put, sticks their hand in a random pile, pulls out a kitchen knife, and swings it around. Swings it around the pickup team, the cleaning team, because they want to throw out... A refrigerator that's duct taped together and filled, just completely filled with expired, sour, two-year-old yogurt. And he fucking puts his hand in a pile, takes out a brand new, never used kitchen knife, just fucking swings it around the pickup team because he's defending he's defending his honor he's defending his yogurt dude just making lethal ready to kill swings that's what I want to witness and then while he's fucking violently swinging his knife dude defending his stash of sour yogurt with the other hand he's fucking Fumbling inside another pile, trying to find a lighter, trying to find a matchbook. So he can like, you know, spark a flame and be like, and be like, if this refrigerator of sour yogurt goes, we all go, bud. I will, I will light a pile on fire, motherfucker. I will light a pile of moldy ass teddy bears right now. Bro, if this goes, we all go. I want to watch someone unhinged. That's what entertains me. I don't want some sad story that breaks my heart. No one watches hoarders to have their heart broken, you fuck. You fuck. <laughs> I like a crazy fucking hoarder story, dude. I love, I love it, dude. I spe dude, if you, what I do now is like, I will flip through the hoarder episodes and if someone is white and they're missing teeth, oh, this is going to be a goodie. This is going to be a good one. <laughs> That's the ones that I like, man. I honestly wonder, this is a question that 
you know, sparked on my head, sparked on the on my frontal lobe, dude, in my direct sight of consciousness. And it sparked up, and the thought was, like, I wonder how many people legitly, how many people legitly watch hoarders, how many anti-Semites watch hoarders, how many racists watch hoarders with, like, with the thought that, you know, hoarders is actually a show about people who have Hasidic rabies, a disease that you get when a non-vaccinated Jew bites you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and <laughs> I wonder how many racists actually believe that thought process and, they, and, and the reason why, you know, Hasidic rabies makes you hoard because... You know, the Jew DNA enters your bloodstream, but it but it realizes, oh, this isn't Jew DNA, and your body tries to fight it off. And then, you know, the Hasidic rabies, the virus, tries to, like, fight off your defense systems and, and just, just, you know, follows the bloodstream into your brain and fries you a little bit. And it just makes you want to hoard. It makes you greedy, but it makes you unintelligibly greedy. Like, instead of, like, hoarding the wealth, you're just hoarding random stuff. You're hoarding things. You're out of your mind because this virus has taken over your psyche. I wonder how many racists watch hoarders with that pretext in their minds. Just with that pretext circulating <laughs> their brains <laughs> honestly man like there has to be at least 10 bro there has to be at least 10 and 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 for them like hoarders is like a some form of like hate porn you know you know how people who are like on the left will watch ben shapiro to get angry and people who are on the right will watch like some sort of i don't know some sort of like leftist feminist protest to get angry whatever the fuck and, like, for them, like, watching Hoarders is what was what throws them up. It fires up the anger, dude. It fires up the anti-Semitism. They're fucking angry. They're, they're you know, they're sitting on the couch like, these fucking, these fuck goddamn fucking, oh, these goddamn, fuck these people. Like, not only do these people affect poor, innocent people with their Hasidic disease, but then they fucking capitalize they make a show and capitalize on poor victims who have who are infected by their disease that they're spreading around by putting cameras in their faces and quote unquote trying to make them better. These fucks, <sighs> these fucks. They're calling their local representative, you know, to like try to pass a bill that will force Jews to wear a mouth guard, you know, an anti-biting mouth guard or some sort of like. Mask, some sort of like Hannibal Lecter mask so they don't go, you know, haywire biting innocent white people. That's their quotes, not mine. <laughs> you know, fuck, I don't know, figure something out. Tie some sort of mouth guard to their yarmulke so they don't bite innocent people. We're losing people out of there. Have you ever watched the show Hoarders? <laughs> oh, God. I have horrible thoughts all the time, dude. I don't even know what to tell you. They, they, they just appear and I don't know what to do with them. I have to do something with them. You know? <laughs> I don't know why my brain goes there. I don't even I don't even have problems with Jews. I don't get the problems with Jews, though. I don't I don't understand the hate. I know it's like a historian thing. It's a historical thing. Maybe people who like play Jeopardy, who are just like consuming, you know, George Clooney movies and fucking history books. Maybe they will understand. You know, maybe they will understand why George Clooney didn't win the Oscars in 08 or whenever the fuck, and they will also understand. You know, what the history of the Jewish people and why they are so hated. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
I don't know. I would never understand anti-Semitism. That that that's one of the weirdest. I mean, I've I've, I've already talked about this. I don't I don't want to rehash it. But like racism for me has always been weird, you know, because again, you you, it's so weird that you're going to hate someone over something that's not their fault. It's not your fault that you're the race that you are, and you just happen to be that race. You just happen to slip. Into this group of people, you know, you didn't become this group of people. You know what I mean? It's not like fucking Freemasons, you know, those like diabolical Freemasons, you know, that like capture babies and feed it to Hillary Clinton or whoever the fuck's behind that. Like, you know, you chose to be that. But when it comes to like, you know, race, like, oh, oh, like I hate Asians. Like you, they didn't choose to be, they didn't choose to be born in that part of the world. It's just fucking, it's a weird hate that I would never understand. But boy, fucking Hoarders. Hoarders is a great fucking show, by the way. It is. It's super interesting. I like Hoarders because it's like... For me, watching Hoarders is like going to the zoo. Like, yeah, going to the zoo and watching wild animals that, that I wouldn't watch otherwise. You know, it is interesting. It is interesting to watch exotic prisoners. It is. It really is, you know. These fucking... <laughs> You know, the, the these exotic species behind bars, you know, just sitting down, staring at the floor, not being the animal that they're supposed to be, going against their nature, just trapped in a cage, just staring at the uh, staring at staring at the at the floor, licking their balls, just depressed. Yeah, sure, that's fun. But I, I don't understand the psyche of a bear. I don't understand the thought process of a giraffe, you know what I mean? But I do kind of, sort of, because we act like we do, but not really, dude. People are fucking insane. When you work customer service, you you are going to understand that 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 what you what you thought you understood about humans, it, it's all wrong, dude. Like like everyone's different. Everyone has their own little story running in their mind, and you don't really know. You don't really understand a person one hundred percent. It's super hard, dude. It's super hard. Like people are super complex. But but there is like a certain. You know, there's like this baseline consciousness that, you know, we could all kind of like assimilate to. And when you see someone just like way out of that, just super far away from like what would be considered normal human behavior, it's just, it's super interesting to watch, dude. Now that's the zoo. That's what I want to watch. The thing about Hoarders also is like, the, 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 the show Hoarders, you know, when you watch it, it like it totally validates that annoying friend of yours that has OCD, man. Because like Hoarders are the yin and people with OCD are the yang, dude. Because these people who like clean up these these hoarder messes, these hoarder piles, it's just a it's just a gang of people with OCD, man. It's just a gang of people with OCD and 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 they're not having it. You know? They are not having it. <laughs> you know, we, we are not only going to fucking sort and organize this pile that is touching the ceiling of your house, but we're going to fold all of your clothes. You know what I mean? Like these people are they're, they're fucking insane. I don't know why you would want to do this. You know, OCD is who they are. And it's a passion, dude. It's crazy. I swear to God, if somehow we if somehow, right, if somehow someone decided to kill all of the hoarders, we just killed. We just, you know, we somehow identified the address and the name, the identity of each and every hoarder, and we just, like, broke into their, like, you know, into their, like, stockpile of, of stuff, and, you know, and we tiptoed around the piles, you know, we swam inside that pile of blankets, and we found where this hoarder was sleeping in, and we just stabbed him. You know, and we killed each and every hoarder, dude. Like, I think, you know, t for the universe to, like, balance itself, everybody with all OCD would also die, dude. I don't think the simulation would have it any other way. <laughs> dude, if everyone who was a hoarder died, everyone with OCD would just have a random weird heart attack. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> Yin and yang, bro. But people of hoard people who are hoarders are super interesting because it's like it's like they have squirrel DNA, dude. Hoarders have squirrel DNA, bro. You, you, you know how squirrels just fucking hoard acorns in a fucking tree? That's them, dude. If a hoarder fucked 
a squirrel. If a hoarder cream pied inside a squirrel with a micro penis, because I think if you fucked a squirrel with like an average sized human penis, I think it would die. It would definitely die. Like, like I'm tempted to Google the dyna- the the fucking diameters of a squirrel's vagina, but I, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to go there <laughs> because I'm almost. <laughs> I'm almost done, and I'm not so desperate to go in such a weird squirrel hole. Just like the hoarder wants to go down a weird squirrel hole. But <laughs> but it's like a hoarder with a micro penis fucked a squirrel, came inside of it. I really think that, I think that, like, yeah, something would be born inside of that squirrel. Like some like some fucked up semi-human, semi-squirrel would come out of the pussy hole of that, you know, humanly inseminated squirrel. <laughs> because they share the same DNA, dude. It's the, it's the same behavior. They have squirrel DNA and it's fucking weird, dude. <laughs> I wonder how much, how much racists hate squirrels, you know? Because, because... They are like, oh, those are the jewels of the animal kingdom. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking hate is amazing. Anyways, let me look for that inspirational quote and brighten up your days. But anyways, I have a segment on this podcast where I say an inspirational quote. I love inspirational quotes. They really help me get through my week. And the inspirational quote of the week it is. Okay, by the way. To give you guys a little context, since the episode was about hoarders, although on and on the beginning of it, I kind of you know made fun of retards, but <laughs> it was mostly about hoarders. And I googled um, hoarding inspirational quotes, and I found a bunch of good ones. But this is one I found, and I found, and I, you know, and I think it's really curious, and it has to do with the episode. Your home is a living space, not a storage space. Francine J. And Francine J has a lot. Has a lot. She's so right with this one. I really like this inspirational quote. But also, I think we could say that our minds are just like homes. Our consciousness is the home of the self, dude. And it's a living space, not a storage space. So you better get over the fact that Vine is fucking dead. And you better get and develop a fucking personality. Anyways, that's the podcast. I hope you motherfuckers enjoyed it. If you're not following the podcast on social media, please follow the podcast on Facebook and on Instagram. All that information is on the episode notes. Or if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, thank you very much. Hey, subscribe. Hey, follow the podcast. It's on the, you know, the description of the video. And anyways, I really hope you guys fucking enjoyed it. If you enjoyed the podcast, hey, share it with a friend. That really fucking helps. But anyways, I'll keep you motherfuckers posted. Peace the fuck out!